Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and WWDC 2019 has just officially wrapped up and there is a lot to cover. In fact, it took Apple two hours and 30 minutes of stage time to go over everything. So bear with me as I try and concise that down into a digestible format. And there is a lot to cover, including new refinements to watch OS 6, iOS 13, and a surprise, iPad now has its own operating system called iPad OS. Of course, there are updates to Mac OS 10.15, now called Mac OS Catalina, and the big showstopper of the show, the brand new Mac Pro complete with an Apple Pro display. So let's go in chronological order as Apple did with the show and let's start off with tvOS because there's just a little update right there. So basically the big features coming to tvOS is that it's going to support multi-user login now. So now if you have different people in your family, they have different preferences in their viewing habits and maybe some of the content that they have on their device, you can now have different logins. So if someone else owns a movie, if they have subscription set up that another family member doesn't have set up, now you can have multi-user login. But by far, the biggest update coming to tvOS is the inclusion of Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 controller support for tvOS. This is a great step forward. Apple has previously had really bad controller support for tvOS and with Apple Arcade, a new service coming out where they're trying to push gaming and tvOS is one of the platforms for gaming by having the best controllers out there, the Xbox One X and the DualShock 4 widely supported on tvOS could make this a potential game changer for tvOS in the way that we play video games because there are a lot of PlayStation and Xbox owners out there and to be able to bring your controller along, not have to purchase a new one, you would be more likely to check out some of the games that tvOS has to offer. And I am really, really excited about this development. I hope that kind of kicks off more game support for tvOS and I'm really looking forward to seeing how Apple Arcade can do that. Okay, let's move on to an operating system you might actually care about, and that is watchOS 6. So to start off, we're getting new watch faces with a gradient watch face, a new digital watch face, a California dial, a solar face, which looked awesome. I am super excited. That is probably the watch face I will be using, and a modular compact watch face. We're also getting three new apps, audiobooks, voice memos, and calculator. We're also getting apps that don't have to be pre-installed onto an iPhone, and the Apple Watch is also getting its own app store, which we have talked very heavily and pre previously on the channel about. So this means now that you can download applications directly from your Apple Watch and not have to use an iPhone. There's also new APIs for the Apple Watch, included extended runtime APIs and new streaming APIs. So more people can use that cellular connectivity to stream right to your Apple Watch. And there's also going to be some more Taptic and some new chime sounds to go along with the alerts for watchOS. Health and fitness is also getting a bigger role in watchOS 6. This comes in the form of activity trend so you can kind of see your health and fitness at a longer glance rather than just the current week schedule that it has set up so you can see way longer trends going out for months or years. Another new health factor is coming to watchOS in the form of hearing health. This was really cool. So the person on stage is wearing an Apple Watch. They asked the audience to get louder and you can see that on the Apple Watch, the levels of the audience was actually recording right there. And then it displayed that the audio was getting louder and that prolonged period to that audio loudness could damage your hearing over time. Of course, Apple is very privacy focused, so it's not going to store any of these audio recordings. Another health feature coming to watchOS is menstrual cycle tracking. We've talked about this before in the rumors. So now women will be able to easily track their menstrual cycle on either their Apple Watch or their iPhone. And finally, like in the previous WWDCs, it is Pride Month, so Apple is releasing a brand new Apple Watch Pride Band. Moving on from watchOS 6 to iOS 13, and this one was a little shocking to me is that iOS 13 is really going to focus a lot on refinements like iOS 12 did. So it is actually working on speeding up the processes that we do every day. So for example, things like Face ID are going to be 30% faster in iOS 13. App downloads are going to be 50% smaller. And because the applications are a smaller size, that's apparently going to lead to two times faster 
application launching and application launching on iOS 12 is already pretty fast to me. So it's going to be really cool to see how fast these applications launch in the fall. So really happy personally to see Apple keep optimizing iOS 13. A lot of people were very happy with the release of iOS 12 and it looks like Apple isn't letting go of that. It looks like every OS that's coming out now is going to be very heavily optimized. Now that doesn't mean there aren't any new changes to iOS 13 because there are and one of the big ones is the new dark mode. So Apple showed off a lot of apps using the dark mode, including notes, photos, maps, widgets, music, and news. And as much as I would love to talk about dark mode all day, there is a lot to cover in this video. And basically all you have to know is that there is dark mode. And from what I can see, it looks pretty good. Apple also demoed its new swipe keyboard feature. A lot of Android phones have had this for a while, including third party keyboards already on iOS, but now the native keyboard on your iPhone will be able to support swipe typing. Apple also showed off a new refined share sheet. And I gotta say, as we're going through all the changes in iOS 13, I took note of just how good I think all of the UI changes and elements to iOS 13 look. I think this looks really, really good. And almost every app update they debuted, it just looked great. Every control, every little small detail, I could see all the changes they were implementing and iOS 13, it just looks good. We also got some new app updates and refreshes. So they showed off notes with a new gallery view, a brand new rehauled reminders app, which looks really, really good compared to the older version. They basically completely different reminders app. Some big updates to maps, including a brand new look, the addition of look around, which is basically street view like on Google Maps. And of course it's Apple, so everything is private and secure even when you're using the Maps application. Speaking of privacy, Apple added some even more privacy centric features to iOS 13, including the option to share your location data only once with a certain application right now, if you're on iOS 12 and a application asks if you wanna share location data, the current way to do it is always share that data or to only share that data when you're using the app. With iOS 13 for these applications, if you only wanna share the data one time and then have it ask you every time, you now get that option. Another great new feature that Apple is adding is the ability to sign in on websites and on apps with your Apple ID. And this will also be private and secure all the way up into the fact that you could even pick to share a randomized fake email with the website or with the app developer so there's no way that they can track it back to your Apple ID. Honestly, this is a great feature and it's something I've thought about before that Apple really should add if they are serious about privacy because right now if you go on any website, there's almost always a sign in with Google or a sign in with Facebook option. Now Apple is giving you a quick way to sign in to access all of these websites and you can do it securely, privately, and anonymously, this is a big win for privacy focused individuals. Some big updates coming over to HomeKit in iOS 13 with better support for cameras. Now you can actually use your iCloud account to store that footage and then HomeKit cameras on Apple's iCloud will store that video footage for you for 10 days for free. And then if you have an iCloud subscription plan, you can store that camera footage on your iCloud plan. Apple is also adding HomeKit support to routers. Apple is also making it easier to organize random phone numbers in iOS 13. So if someone calls you that you know, or you have from a previous contact, you'll have the option to either put a contact photo or a Memoji, and then you will see the display name for that person. Speaking of Memoji, in iOS 13, there's going to be a lot more customization options, including things like makeup, accessories, and AirPods. The, that part of the presentation I was kind of checked out on, it was a little weird. So I think that's given us all a great deal to think about. Portrait mode is also getting an update in iOS 13. There's going to be new filters and new ways to enhance and change those filters so you can get more detail in things like your skin tone. You'll also get a better editing experience when editing photos directly in the Photos app. And for the first time ever, you'll be able to use those photo editing tools to also edit your videos. Now, by far the biggest update coming to Photos is the way that Apple is organizing photos in iOS 13. 
So it's using things like machine learning to remove duplicates, screenshots, and receipts from your main photo library. Your photos are also going to be organized more easily into days, months, and years. Apple pitched this organization as almost like a diary for your life and the photo organization and collections they're doing on iOS 13 definitely is a huge step up from iOS 12. Siri is also getting some enhancements in iOS 13, including some specific features coming to AirPods and HomePod. So on AirPods, you'll now be able to get messages read directly into your AirPods as you receive a message. And this was really cool. This is something that looked really futuristic and is definitely a way forward for the AirPods to be a more ambient computing device. You'll also be able to share audio from one AirPods user to another. So say if you're listening to the same song, if your friend has AirPods, you can both listen to that same song in sync on both pairs of AirPods. HomePod is also getting some new features, including handoff support. It's also getting an important feature, voice ID. So now you can have multiple HomePod users. Shortcuts is also getting a bit of an update with iOS 13. And basically this is focused more on creating shortcuts for you. So if you are already doing a bunch of tasks throughout the day, now when you go into the shortcuts app, it's going to suggest pre-made shortcuts for you. Siri is also getting an improved voice thanks to neural text to speech. And now with iOS 13, if you get a spam call, iOS 13 is going to try and reroute that directly into your voicemail rather than having it pop up on your phone. But wait, there's more because not only do we now have iOS 13, now we have iPad OS 13. So iPad OS is an attempt for the iPad now to kind of break away a little bit from the iPhone's development path and kind of implement more features that make sense on an iPad. So Apple kind of showed off a new home screen. Now I was kind of expecting a little bit more from this home screen update, but so far they have tighter access of those icons and then you can swipe over from the left to bring up the widget view directly on your home screen. Apple is also making the multitasking experience better on iPad. So if you have a slide over window, you'll be able to change that very quickly or change between those if you are opening up a notes in a multitasking, you'll be able to expose that and search all of the different notes multitasking windows you have open. And that will work for any app, including mail or other third party applications. iPad OS also has some updates to files, including column view, file preview, quick actions, and more metadata. And finally support for external storage on iPad on stage. They plugged a thumb drive directly into the iPad and it showed up the files in the files app. Safari is also getting a major update on iPad OS. So now it will be the desktop version of Safari and it will also include things like a download manager. You'll also be able to load custom fonts onto iPad OS. New gestures on iPad OS, including a three finger swipe to copy and paste. The Apple Pencil software is also getting an update with iPad OS, reducing the latency from 20 milliseconds, which is already really low, all the way down to just nine milliseconds. Apple is also introducing Pencil Kit, so third-party applications can add support for the Apple Pencil more easily. And you're going to be able to mark up screenshots or entire documents a lot easier in the iPad OS. And now we can take a break from all those software announcements to probably one of the biggest surprises of the show, the brand new Mac Pro. So before WWDC, there was a lot of speculation on the new Mac Pro and almost all rumors I was reading was very specifically focusing on that word modular. I saw a lot of concepts of different parts stacked up on top of each other. And a lot of people were saying that Apple wasn't going to introduce a traditional desktop and they were wrong. Apple went ahead and basically released the Cheese Grater 2.0. Personally, I really like the design of the new Mac Pro. I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to make fun of it, but I really like how Apple leaned into that legacy of people calling it the old Cheese Grater. And I think they did a fantastic job designing this new Mac Pro. Now, most pros could probably care less about what the Mac Pro looks like. They're only concerned about what's inside of it and just how powerful is this machine. And this thing just seems so powerful. It's going to be able to be configured with up to 28 cores on an Intel Xeon processor, 2,933 megahertz of ECC RAM. It's going to have 12 easily accessible slots for that RAM, and it's going to be configurable with up to 1.5 terabytes of RAM. 1.5 terabytes. I don't even have that much 
regular storage on my Mac. It's only 512 gigabytes of storage. So someone could potentially configure more RAM than I have internal SSD storage. You're also getting a bunch of PCIe expansion slots with up to eight internal slots, two Thunderbolt 3 ports and two USB-A ports, and then another two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the top, an audio jack, and then two 10 gigabit ethernet ports. Also advanced graphic options for the Radeon Pro Vega 2, and you could have two of those GPUs running in the Mac Pro at once, and Apple's saying that this is the most powerful GPU ever. Now Apple is focused on making this Mac Pro desktop expandable, and they even have a really ingenious way to open the device and quickly access all of the parts you would want to get into. And on top of that, they're saying it's going to be as quiet as an iMac Pro under normal use cases. And they demoed a ton of Pro applications, including Logic Pro with a thousand tracks supported at once, and also Final Cut Pro 10 with three different 8K ProRes streams running at the same time. Now there was a lot of detail about this new Mac Pro and I could go on and on and on and I could probably do an entire dedicated video just covering this Mac Pro, which I may end up doing, but for now, the Mac Pro starts at $5,999, and of course, it will be even more configurable after that. Apple also introduced a brand new Apple Pro display. Apple is calling this the Pro Display XDR, which stands for Extreme HDR. It is a 32-inch Retina 6K display with 20 million pixels. Honestly, really happy to see Apple get back into the display game, and this display looks really cool and has a bunch of great features. I'm sure it's going to look great, but I doubt I could afford it because it starts at $4,999 and that doesn't even include the brand new cool looking stand where you can kind of tilt it at different angles and then switch it into a portrait mode and that starts at $999 and extra $1,000 just for the stand. Okay, now one more bit of software to cover before we end this video and that is macOS Catalina. The first big change coming to macOS Catalina is that iTunes is going to be broken up into three new apps, music, TV, and podcasts. Another brand new feature coming to macOS Catalina is called Sidecar. Now we've talked about this feature before and that's basically turning your iPad into a Mac OS display. And they even went over different options for that, including the ability to either use it wirelessly or wired and attach things like your Apple Pencil so you can use your iPad Pro as a graphics tablet for your Mac. Apple is also adding a really great accessibility option for voice control. And basically you can control the entire operating system using just your voice. They had a really, really great video showing this off. And that was just a mind blowing thing to see. Apple also chose this time to debut the new Find My app, which is basically combining Find My Friends and Find My iPhone and Find My Mac all into one application. And basically it's going to help you find your friends and devices better and includes things like if your MacBook Pro is in sleep mode, you'll still be able to get its last known location. Apple is also bringing other iOS features like screen time for the Mac and also the biggest feature of macOS Catalina is the ability for developers to now port over their iOS iPad apps or iPad OS apps now to macOS 10.15. So this was previously known as Project Marzipan and now they're calling it Catalyst. And this basically makes it so that developers can easily bring over their applications. And they had a bunch of different third party application being shown off. And this is just a new way to get a bunch of iPad apps. And one of the downsides about the Mac platform right now is really a lack of new apps out there. And by making it easier for iPad OS apps to be ported over to the map with just a few days of coding is what Apple is saying. I think we're going to see a lot more applications make its way to the Mac. And then eventually we're going to see a unified framework with just one code base to run all these different applications across the Apple Watch, across iPhone, iPad, and of course the Mac. But basically what this means for you is that now we'll finally get a Twitter app back on the Mac. Okay, now hopefully I did a good job condensing that long, long WWDC conference into a more digestible form. Obviously this was a jam packed conference with a lot to cover. So if you like this video, make sure you give me a like if you wanna see more, including more coverage of the iOS 13 beta, 
watch os 6 beta ipad os beta and mac os catalina make sure you're subscribed to the channel i will be uploading videos all throughout the week also please let me know what you thought of apple's worldwide developers conference this year what were you most excited for and as always thank you so much for joining me and i will see you all in the next video take care everyone